noches, mi amor. Que descanses bien. Igual tú. Buenas noches, mamá. taking care of my baby sister. And then they went back to look for my brother. They took him out, but he was already dead. It was a very difficult time for us. Our house was totally destroyed. But at the same time, we received so much help. Um, I remember being there that night, and just like an hour after, I cannot even remember how long, but I saw my cousins coming, and they came to give us help, and it was such a relief to see them. I remember they prepared a place for me on the sidewalk, and I, I just slept there because I was a child and I was able to sleep. Later on, I heard that as they were waiting for the sun to come up to take my brother to the cemetery, a neighbor, which was not really close to us, we didn't really know him very well, he stopped by and he said, um, do you have a coffin for him? And my parents said, no, we were planning on just wrapping him in, in a blanket or something like that. And then he said, just wait for me and see what I can do. Um, shortly after that, he came back with a coffin. And um, that was such a sweet expression of charity and of, um, of love from someone that we didn't even know. And uh, then after that, we stayed a few days in one of my aunt's neighbor's backyard and there were many people in there we were just sleeping out there because we were we were not there to go into any house because we were we were afraid that something would happen and I remember laying down you know looking at the stars at night and still thinking what is going on when will I wake up from this a couple of days after that after everything happened my aunt came to me with a present. And I remember looking at her and thinking, why are you giving me a present? It's not my birthday. And she said, today is Christmas. And I remembered. I had, to, I had totally forgot that Christmas was coming. But she helped me to remember. And for the first time, I cried. I cried because I think that I realized that it, it was real, that it was not really a nightmare, that it was really happening. I remember that there were some trucks that would pass by and they would give us water, and another truck would pass by and they would give us food. And I know that all that came from people from all over the world that came to help us. During that period, it was amazing to see all the help that we received from strangers. Even though I didn't understand back then the concept of charity, I was able to feel the love from those people that helped us. And, and my gratitude was always there. I was not yet a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. 
Back then, I really didn't know much about the plan of salvation. I just knew that my brother was dead and that he, he was probably in heaven, but I really didn't know exactly what had happened to him. And I wondered many times if was, I was going to be able to see him again. I remember having that question and that longing in my heart. What happened to him? Where is he? Where did he go? Will I see him again? When I was 11 years old, my mother had a, a baby, which was my baby brother. And uh, he was a reason for joy for us, but it was very hard. I remember that sometimes we would just be sitting in the, in the living room after, and my mother would just start crying for no reason. And I knew that she was, she was hurting inside because she didn't know exactly what had happened to my brother. It was maybe about two years after the earthquake that I started having some kind of daydream, um, you know, because I, I would think about my brother many times, and I remember thinking, where is he? Um, will I see him again? And then I started having this daydream in which I would see him come to our door, knock on our door, and then I would go and open the door and then he would be standing right there and he would tell me, guess what? I'm not really dead, I'm alive. I'm just somewhere else, but uh, I was not allowed to come, but now I can come to you and I will stay with you and I will never leave again. And I think that daydream that I had helped me in coping with the, the pain and the, and, the, and the sorrow that I felt. It was more than 40 years after that earthquake in Managua that uh, one day I was doing my dishes. I was in my kitchen. And it was very close to Easter time. And during that time, you know, we talk about the resurrection of the Lord. And I was just reflecting on that, you know, thinking about the resurrection and all that it means to us. And then for some reason, I started thinking about my brother. And at that moment, it finally hit me. And I remembered that they dreamed that fantasy that I had about him coming to me after he was dead. And then I realized that it was not a fantasy and that it was not a silly thing because through all those years, I never told anybody about that because I always thought that it was silly that it was just me, my imagination. But then I realized that it was really the light of Christ that came to this little girl who needed comfort at that moment of her life. That was really revelation about the beauty of the resurrection, that my brother was somewhere else, that his spirit is not dead, that he is alive. And that one day, we will be able to be together again, and then we will never separate again. And for me, that moment was a moment of glory and just joy and gratitude. How merciful the Lord was with me, that he allowed me to see that at that moment in my life when I needed it.